Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for turn three of Extreme Makeover, the uh, re I suppose you could call it the redecoration of a large feature somewhere in Stalingrad. So at the end of the previous turn, just to give you a bit of a reminder of where we left off, things were looking decidedly in the favour of the Germans. So this um, large structure here, which is the target, the German fire, both uh, tanks and artillery, have managed to demolish about two-thirds of it. So it's it's barely halfway through the game. No, really, we, we've, we're only a third of the way through the game. And the Soviets are already in a lot of trouble because they only have that little intact spot on the house that they have to try and to stop the Germans from knocking down. The moment that structure collapses, it, it, the game ends in a German victory. So things are getting very tense. The, the Germans, to a degree, can afford to be a bit methodical now and a bit careful. But then again, there's also the temptation to just rush in and finish the job regardless. The Soviets really don't have many options at all, and they're going to have to fight really, really hard to prevent that outcome. Personally, although I'd keep my feelings to myself, I think the battle is probably lost unless something changes very rapidly. But uh, I suspect the only way forward for the Soviets is to try and knock out as many of the German heavy assets as they can. And I'm thinking particularly of their Panzer III, their two anti-tank guns and their mortars. If they can deprive the Germans of those before the building comes crashing down around their ears, then they have a shot at victory. Well, it's virtually guaranteed, because if the Germans lose those assets, then they have nothing that can bring the house down. Well, we hope, we hope, because it, it, could, it could be bad in any case. <laughs> and uh, I think... Um, Yes, if the Germans are reduced to just having grenades and silly stuff like that, then they won't be able to complete the job. So that's what the Soviets have to do, irrespective of the cost. So again, to save time, like I did on the previous turn, I, I went through the orders phase and assigned the orders for the respective sides. Now, you can probably see the Germans have one extra order token, um, on top of what they had the previous turn. And the reason for that is they took advantage of the fact that they drew a tactician card during the supply phase, and they very, very sensibly decided to commit it. The Soviets, unfortunately, didn't get anything nearly as useful. Um, but their reinforcements arrived this turn. Now, I've been slightly naughty with this, because, partly because of the limitations of the size of my dining room table. But everything along this line here are the Soviet reinforcements which were due to enter in turn three, i.e. this turn. So we've got a pretty strong force of infantry of various types, backed up by a light tank. I mean, the T-60 scout tank isn't up to much. But to be honest, by this stage, every little helps. Now, just to be clear, these fellows are technically off map. They're waiting in the wings, but if I tried to put them off map, they'd end up on my floor. So um, I have not assigned them any order tokens because really the Soviets need everything they've got doing useful things at the front line. So these fellows, this whole line of reinforcements is not going to move until the supply phase. So just bear in mind that although they are there, they're technically not there. Hope that makes sense. So, moving straight into it, the Germans have the initiative, and they start with a bit of an interesting choice. Their very successful demolition of that section of the building has created them a few problems, because the placement of their units was optimised for including the mortars back here, they had good line of sight from cover to that half of the building. But now that they've destroyed it, the other half is out of line of sight for most of their units. So their first unit, which they're going to activate, the Panzer, Panzer III, that has a bit of a difficult decision to make. 
In order to bring its main gun to bear on that part of the building, it's going to have to leave the nice cosy cover it's been enjoying in the lee of that wrecked building over there. And it's going to have to drive out into a fairly open bit of ground where of course there's a Russian T-34 waiting to take its turn. That's not a happy prospect for the Panzer commander. Now he has a couple of choices. He could, in theory, try to motor off round the other side of the building, um, see if he can engage the T-34 in a bit of a game of hide and seek while hopefully trying to plant shots into that thing. Um, such a move would also distract the Russian tank from taking on the anti-tank guns and the light German Panzer I and all the various other units which are trying to achieve something meaningful. Um, but it's a tough decision. The alternative would be to be a bit gung-ho about it and just drive his Panzer straight towards the T-34, accepting the fact that he won't be firing this turn but he'll be placing his armour in a nice position to begin bombarding that building next turn. And even better, the strongest part of his armour, which is rated 8, will be facing the T-34. Now, given that the Panzer only has a speed of 4, that's another thing to bear in mind. At best, his nose is, about, is going to get there, which means that the T-34 can pr can just about see him and target his weaker side armour. The final option, of course, is to remain stationary, but that building is not going to knock itself down, and the Germans probably want to finish the job before those enormous Soviet reinforcements at the other end of the table start coming in to make their lives difficult. So, after a quick consult, and also a very quick look at his hand of bonus cards to uh, see what he's got. Um, nothing that really helps, unfortunately. The Panzer commander decides that in the best traditions of his service, he's going to go for it. So he is going to make his move one, two, three, four. Now, while he can't do anything to the T-34 this turn, it is possible for him to bring his machine guns, employing moving fire, to bear on the defenders inside the building, just over there. And not unnaturally, oops, camera trying to get away from me. Not unnaturally, he's gonna go for it. Unfortunately for him, just as he's about to take his shot, the Soviets reveal that their tank has other ideas and it is going to target him before he opens fire. It's a range of only five hexes, sorry, squares to the T-34. And although it loses its activation for the turn, it might be worth it if they can kill the most powerful German armour unit before it has a chance to do any damage. So interrupting the German turn, the Soviets open fire. And just to add insult to injury, they're going to also play weak point, which means that they can use the stern or, or rear armour rating of the tank, which is only six. Things are not looking good all of a sudden for the Germans. So the Russians make their roll. And they roll a one for a total of five. So the shot does not penetrate. Oh dear, that was a wasted opportunity. Meanwhile, the Germans will gleefully machine gun the infantry unit in there as they planned to. And they get a much better dice roll. They get a six. They're not going to bother with suppressive fire. They're just going to go for a kill. So minus two 
because they're firing on the move. Their firing strength is plus four against infantry, so it's reduced to two. Now the ruins do provide cover, further cover of plus two, so that's as the, the bonuses plus and minus make zero. But the Germans did roll a six, which is enough to flip the Soviet fire team to its reduced side. That's not good news for the Soviets. So, turn one has gone very well for the Germans. The Russians, of course, forfeit their turn one because of the opportunity fire. However, they are going to play ready, and that will take away the activation marker from their tank. It can't do anything else, but it will allow it to move during the supply phase, which may be helpful. Or may not, we'll have to see. So moving back to the Germans, they next activate their anti-tank gun, which unfortunately for the Russians enjoys barely a line of sight to the target building. So the German artillery piece is going to fire And it scores a hit. So that poor structure is looking extremely rickety now. Another hit will do it. Another hit on that by now near collapsing house is going to win it for the Germans. And while I'm going to fight on, I'm becoming increasingly hard-pressed to see what the Soviets can do about it. Now the next Soviet unit to activate is this one, but they're stuck behind their tank. And none of their options are good. Hmm. What I'm about to do may be completely suicidal and may well achieve nothing, but I am going to attempt to force the Germans into some kind of action by ordering these units forward. My thinking is... I see I've moved him slightly off camera view there, but he's basically gone to the, down to that edge of the map board. My thinking is that if I start to pressure their infantry, it may, may force the Germans to pay attention to this side of the battlefield. Now, chances are it won't. Chances are that uh, any German commander worth his salt will go, yeah, whatever, do what you want. I'm busy knocking down a building in fulfilment of my orders. But I can't really think of anything to do with the groups that were sheltering behind the tank. So there's not really any choice. So, the Germans, their third activation is that highly dangerous mortar that's been causing us a lot of trouble. Now, luckily for me, when, as the Soviets, when that half of the building came crashing down, another German unit, i.e. the mortar, was deprived of the necessary line of sight in order to begin targeting it. So they're going to have to hop out of that building using their one point of movement. Actually, they'll hang back a bit. Being a mortar, there's no point them going too far forward. So they've hopped out, but they won't really be able to do anything till next turn. And they'll probably want that infantry to scamper out the way. It doesn't block their line of sight, but... Um, but his presence there is a bit of a nuisance anyway. So they will not be lobbing any shells at the building this turn. It's probably a huge relief for the Russians. Meanwhile, the third Soviet activation. Um, hmm. Another difficult one. 
I think I'm going to send them down as I did the others. So one, two, three. As I say, this is a very suicidal move, but I am trying desperately to distract the Germans in any way that I can think of. And because that tank didn't move, it was worth it for the opportunity fire, but the fact that it stayed and fired rather than moving out of the way um, means that the, the Russian position there was untenable in terms of offensive action. So that will be the Russian move. Back to the Germans in their northern sector. Um, they continue to wrestle this anti-tank gun forward, trying to give it a good firing position. And they are going to set it up to fire now that they have a clear line of sight. So again, it's more punishment the Russians have been spared this turn because they were still moving the gun into position. But unfortunately, next turn, a lot more ordnance is going to start landing on that building. Unless the Soviets can do something about that. Note that despite my apology in the last video, I'm still using Russians and Soviets fairly interchangeably. I'll see what I can do about controlling that. Now this fire team here has a bit of a line of sight onto that gun, and it might be worth one, two, three, four, five. They have it in fairly easy range. They are going to take a shot at that gun. Oh no, wrong unit. Going to use the fire team over there. So they are trying to have a crack at the gun's crew. And it's just regular fire. And they roll a one. Oh dear. Soviet dice rolling is terrible at the moment. So a few rifle and SMG rounds ping off the shield of the artillery piece, but the crew of the Pack 38 are not bothered in the slightest. Carry on going, going about their task, setting their gun up. That's just depressing. Right, so you fellows have activated, not very effectively. Right. The Panzer I doesn't really need to move. It's got a good line of sight to the defenders in the building. And really, although it could go for some suppressive fire, it may as well just try and kill them. So range is good. And the Germans make their roll. They get plus four in addition to the dual cannon dice roll uh, modifier. Uh, oh, gosh, they got a six for their higher roll, so 14 altogether. The Soviets get two for the, um, for the, for the uh, defence offered by the rubble, so that brings it down to 12. That's still not... Uh, oh, actually, that's such a powerful hit. Because um, that is double their defensive rating. Uh, which means they're wiped out, unfortunately. That was an awful lot of fire they just received from that Panzer I, and it's been sufficient to take out the unit. That is not good. And well satisfied with its work, the German Panzer I just sits there. Now the Soviets have been deprived of their fifth activation. So it's going to go over to the German recon group here. Now, I'd given them that order to try and get them to do some house clearing if possible, but it's a bit of an exposed position and the tanks, the German tanks, appear to have the situation well under control. The only thing that it might be worth doing is have them move out to try and cause mischief for the, for the Soviets elsewhere. But I'm a bit hard put to see what they could really do that won't just get them killed or maybe give the Soviets something to worry about. Hmm. Decisions, decisions.
The Germans don't have a burst into action card, which is annoying for them. Actually, it may just be better. May just be better for them to stay put and just not use that turn. They can always be used at a later time if needed. Now for the Soviets. Hmm. I am tempted. to order that unit to leap out and make an assault because infantry going against armoured vehicles actually do have quite an advantage. That might be worth doing. It It's suicidal and it's absolutely crazy. But do I have the right equipment for an assault? Um, permit me to do a quick sidestep to check this out. Because what I'm hoping is if that brave band of infantrymen could take out that tank, that would be a huge, huge advantage. Or at least it would swing, swing things back in the Soviet direction somewhat. But I'll have to see whether we can actually do it, because we've only got grenades. And I know that grenades... Um, don't really... Ah, no, we can't do it, unfortunately because my unaugmented infantry do not have the necessary equipment and they don't have any inherent ability to penetrate heavy armor. So that's a shame. Two, three. I think their view of that group is just obscured by the German armour. In fact, unfortunately for them, their view of most of the opposing group, German groups is obscured by armour. So there's not a huge amount they can do from there. I might just have them relocate to an area that offers somewhat better visibility. if not necessarily any better protection. Of course, a lot would depend on whether the house is still standing. It will be by the end of this turn, at least. So finally, we get to the last two German units. Now, those had been given markers, activation markers, as a sort of reserve, just in case they were needed. But to be perfectly honest... There's not a lot that they can do at the moment. And they're in very much the same circumstances as the Russians via V that German armour. In themselves, they don't have anything that can touch that T-34 over there. So, with some reluctance, the Germans are going to... Oh, wait, 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 wait might be worth them taking a shot at the defenders in the house. Do you know what? They're going to do that. Because although it's highly unsafe to step out onto that main street, especially as there's a whopping great tank battle in the offing, it is absolutely fine for them to take a shot at the defenders in the house. In fact, um, the officer is out of range, so he'll be forfeiting his turn later. But the infantry, the recon group, can certainly have a crack at it. So they open fire. They get a five. Luck is definitely with them. So their total is six. The defensive bonus in here...
R is seven because that house is still intact. Okay. So the Soviet defenders are all right. They've taken a bit of fire, but it hasn't harmed them. The Soviets have used all their activations and the Germans are going to forfeit their last one because the uh, situation they were preparing for never did arise in the end. And so now we get, um, we get the supply phase. So the Germans draw and get an opportunity fire card themselves. That might be quite nice. The Soviets draw, get a fall back, that's probably not what they want so much. A second chance, that's useful, especially with the dice rolls we've been having. And courage, possibly useful. There hasn't been much suppression going on in the game, but you know, we may get an opportunity for it. So as the Germans have the initiative, we're going to have a quick look at their situation. To be honest, there's not that much advantage for them changing their dispositions at the moment. Everyone's perfectly happy where they are. Most people have a good bead on either the objective or the Russian units in the vicinity. The only unit I will move is that one because it is clogging up the position Actually, no, that would be a bit crazy. Let's move it back here. It would be a waste of a good fire group to throw it directly in the path of the T-34. So instead it will sidestep. And that will give the mortars a clear line of sight at the target building. Which means next turn an awful lot of German fire is going to be landing on that. The Soviets, meanwhile, Tanya Chernova, the sniper, is going to move somewhere a little bit better because she still doesn't have brilliant line of sight to any of the Germans from where she is. So she's going to move herself up into the woods. It's a bit dangerous, but I need her a bit forward where she can actually see the people she's aiming at. Um, Yuri, I'm going to keep safe because the Soviets are going to need those command points. Now that mortar back there, I really should have activated that because it might have been in a position to do something except if I move the machine gun, one, two, three, into the woods, and they can set up in anticipation of that tank, hopefully moving out of the way next turn. I say hopefully, because if it decides it's a better idea to try and kill that German tank, it won't be going anywhere fast. Now, what to do with the mortars? Hmm. I think... I'll sidestep them one that way, just so they have a slightly improved view out of the building they've taken shelter in. That infantry unit can go straight there. More infantry can go through to reinforce. Actually, let's send you that way. So all along the Russian lines, we're getting units advancing into position, but it may not be in time. And finally, we get the Soviet rear line. So 
I'm just going to pretend these fellows just moved in. So I'm counting that as an entry hex. One, two, three. Or square, I should say. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got a nice line of reinforcements coming in there. Three. So, there endeth the movement for turn three. And I'll just place the camera here so you get a vague idea of the overall situation again. So we are now exactly halfway through the game. In terms of the fighting, the Soviets have somewhat got the worst of it. Um, the two opportunities they had to fire and kill German units, unfortunately, both saw dismal dice rolls. So they haven't actually managed to do anything. Um, on the German side, I forgot to mention Young Steiner, the... Um, the, the good old Feldwebel who can move on his own because he has autonomy. The reason I haven't done anything special with him is because, like many of the German infantry, he's sitting quite pretty where he is, thank you very much, just keeping Russian units fixated on him, while the heavier elements in the north are doing a grand job of knocking that house down. The Soviets are still perilously close to losing the game because one more hit will take that structure down. It's going to be a very desperate three turns. The Germans did not do as well as I expected them to. Like I said, and I've said it a few times, they potentially could have won the game this turn. But by sheer good luck, the Soviets are just hanging on but they really need to do their best to cause absolute mayhem soon. If they can manage it, knocking out that German tank right there would be fantastic because the wreck would block line of sight for the anti-tank gun in the building over there. It wouldn't be able to stop line of sight for that one, but it would significantly reduce the German chances of knocking the building down this turn because instead of... Um, three shots, possibly four at best, but realistically three, they would only have the two. And that's from slightly weaker units that aren't so good at knocking buildings down. So there is that faint hope. The Germans, if they keep their nerve and keep pounding away, I would say very much have this game in the bag, but not yet. And they also have to be aware that there's still some formidable Soviet units here that while they've been fighting suboptimally, are still quite a threat. And behind them is another mass of Soviets coming in to pitch into the fight. So there's a lot still to go on. Turn four may well decide the game. We'll have to see. But I'm going to call it theirs. It's a neat place to stop. Um, and so it only remains to say, um, hope to see you when I make the next video. Thank you very much for stopping by. Always good to have your company. As always, a big cheery hello to my regulars. Fantastic to see you guys, as always. Um, if you happen to be visiting my channel for the first time and this is your first video, a very, very warm welcome to you. I hope you'll stick around, at least with this series, or if not, maybe the rest of my um, videos about the hero system, if that's what you're interested in. But... By all means, do check out the other videos you find on this channel. I hope there'll be more to interest you. Um, and as ever, guys, thank you very much. Always a joy to have your company uh, while I'm making these. And um, I will see you again soon. Very much appreciate you tuning in. Bye.